I said this before in quite a few of my other videos and talking about what's going on in America in terms of people losing freedoms and men not wanting to react. And I've stated if you actually been paying attention into different parts of the world in places like in Colombia and even now in Cuba, where people have been protesting all over Europe and Africa, etc. Nation after nation, people have been protesting in regards to loss of freedoms, typically revolving around totalitarian or more communistic uh, ways of ruling over people. And of course, even most recently here in Cuba, where the people and, you know, chanting for freedom. so individuals literally chanting in spanish you know liberta freedom and you even see in the crowd with people holding up an american flag as the american flag represents freedom to many people what unfortunately many of these individuals may not understand is that america too is falling towards that same style of government as more americans get involved and push for socialism eventually it ends up turning into communism. And this is basically what we're seeing in our country. And it's just a shame when you look from country after country after country, and I've said this multiple times, where people are just pushing back against their local governments, and then the American people are just there, like, waiting for a stimmy check, despite having all the guns, right? And you see all these pictures of all these men showing, showcasing their weapons. You might see videos of people doing uh, videos showcasing their weapons. And a lot of people push back in terms of legally speaking, but realistically speaking, the, the, the American government knows that if they knocked on somebody's door tomorrow, I mean, this has already happened with that couple in, um, I think it was in Washington, I forget, the, the, the two lawyers that were pushing back when the people broke into their, you know, into the gated property, and then they were basically, you know, they pulled out their weapons and told them, told these people to leave as they were breaking down uh, breaking down the fence to get into this private gated community and then eventually they got their weapons confiscated under investigation and, and that as a part of the plea bargain that their weapons would be melted down and so these individuals actually shouldered their rifle and were able to push back against the mob but then of course the government comes in and says well you know you got to give us your weapons and people might say, well, you know, they still have other weapons. But the point of the matter is, is that once Big, once Big Daddy government comes in and drops the hammer and says, well, we're going to toss you in jail if you don't give us your weapons. Well, what do they do? They give over their weapons. There was no mob of people out there, Second Amendment, two-way, no, you know, no, not to be infringed. Right? You didn't see that. You didn't see that on TV. There were no protests of these individuals having to give up their weapons. It was like real quiet. Shit happened in the night. And people will perform, you know, they will do some videos on social media, but ain't nobody going to go out there and protest two-way, not to be infringed, etc. Sure, you might see, you know, a Ted Cruz, he's going to post a little a little video, or he might post a, he might post a little snapshot and write, not to be infringed, Second Amendment, etc. But ain't nobody out there ready to do anything. And that's what the government knows. The government knows this. And that's the whole point to demonstrations like this the whole point of a demonstration is for the government to see what kind of numbers you're working with but that's step one when step one fails you just don't go home and say fuck it, it didn't work you go to step two the whole point of step one is to be like this is how deep we rolling and to get you to consider maybe we don't maybe we don't want to go that route but if you're not ready to bring that heat you're not ready to shoulder your rifle well, then the government's like well you ain't gonna do shit you're gonna go back home and we're gonna carry on as business and that is the unfortunate reality that we see here in the states if americans were, would actually push and fight for freedom it would cause other nations and literally america as the statue of liberty is supposed to be the beacon of freedom and yet the people who pretend to be free or with, you know, with all the rights that we have, the Second Amendment, freedom of speech, and this gets infringed on a daily basis. People recognize that the courts are not working in your favor. You do a little bit of history. The whole point 
of having courts was to stop the wars. They were like, can we stop killing each other for a minute? Let's try to do this shit civilly. And so they created the court system. Same thing happened in biblical times with the 12 tribes of Israel. When shit was getting out of hand, God said, let us raise and erect judges so that you people stop killing each other. We are literally just repeating history once again. And of course, if the judges do not uphold the laws and the constitution, well then, yes, we're going back. At least that would be a logical outcome. Like I said, when logic and reason fail, and this is what this is, this is, you know, the people have already utilized logic and reason by this time. Now they're out there on the streets. When this doesn't work, what's next? You just go back home and hope. Hope is not a strategy. Hope is not a strategy. That's what the governments, that's what most of these governments have come to realize <clears throat> is that the people, the people don't really have, <clears throat> they don't have that spirit. They're not ready. That's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of shit going that route. Like I said, until the times get harder, as they say, the beatings will continue until morale has improved.